Are they similar? Are they different? Uh, are they, do they run parallel? See, I was an educator before I became a career counsellor. And that transition and that journey, I think uh, it was just time to be. So many times when uh, you know students uh, are interacting with the teachers and they're like, ma'am, how are we calculus? What is their integration? Why do we need to you know, uh, read and uh, learn history? So that was a constant struggle which I had seen my fellow friends and myself also struggling. Ki curriculum aapko, and you have to teach that curriculum. And her age group, ka, say maybe 5th to 7th graders are different. 7th and 9th ki inquiry is different. 10th and 12th ki inquiry is different, right, regarding the subjects. So if I believe this is the time we can integrate both the things, like we make a support group with the educators and the counsellor come together. So when I became counsellor, it, it is a con you know, conscious effort from my side that I develop a curriculum for my school in which you know, educators and teachers are equal stakeholders. Where I'm empowering them with the knowledge which I'm imparting in my students. It should not be like, I've got it, I'm not going to share it. That is not the base where I started it. Coming from a private school, um, I made sure that I'm reaching out to different government schools also, which have very basic infrastructure. So it is like counseling in every school, is that what I'm here to promote? And how can we empower? I'll give you some, you know, I've got some documents also. I've downloaded it in a laptop. So I'll show you the journey and small little things which you can do in your school. Maybe, you know, the middle, middle years and then 8th and ninth onwards. And how you can segregate the, you know, sharing of information about the age group that you are interacting with. I don't say that you But for their skill set or profiling, you can introduce those concepts to them at the early years. Show them ki why do, do they matter? What activities you can do in the school? So yes, in a way they are parallel to each other. If I'm effective as a counselor, then I need to make my educators and the teachers also as effective, make them aware of the, about their subjects. And also uh, on a constant basis, give them information. These are the new careers which are emerging out of the subject. So I'm taking much longer, but one more thing that uh, suppose my history teacher is teaching about uh, these caves in Madhya Pradesh. Right? Or any other, you know, historical place which has some, you know, importance in the timeline. I have made sure that I give them documents. You also tell them about the careers emerging out of history, archaeology, travel and tourism, how they are spending, a digital form of it, you know. So this is my role as a counsel which is coming. Slow and steady, but you will be there. So when, uh, when you're entering the class and you know that I you know, you have careers and I can update my students at the right time. They will have interest. Give them real life examples of doing very well from those subjects. Somebody who is great with creative English or creative writing, okay, fine, they can become bloggers, they can go into journalism. So many things we can just update. By just two lines there will make all the difference. So that is where I also come in. I supplement with that information. I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, so with my question to you is, uh, do you think that it is more productive for schools? to collaborate with universities who have empowered college counseling cells? Um, absolutely. I think having that sort of bridge between the school and the university is essential because what happens is in school, you know, our targets become grades, become exams, become assessments. But I think what we also realize is that the student is ultimately being prepared for the next step, which is a university. To bring in universities into campus, to for example, have college fairs, to have interactions, to have, you know, bring them here for some, some you know, for research programs here. I think these are really very practical. They're, they're very practical. They don't take a lot. They just require you to maybe have another, you know, three, four calendar days where students come down here or you organize something at school. I think that can really give them the flavor of what's coming. Because, you know, working in a more short term way where we think of the next term or the next year, may just render them not very useful for the future, maybe three years down the line. So to think backward might be important and that's why having think tanks with universities becomes essential. And you know, having that sort of a dedicated space in school where you know, students can go have those conversations and that becomes like for example, uh, you know, having that hub of information there, but also that percolates with the rest of the team. I think that, that conduit, that, pipe, that pipeline is very important between 
And before we begin our conversation, let's first just discover who are the important stakeholders in this whole journey. Can any one of you tell us something besides? Students. Students, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Students, parents, school, teachers, counselors, anyone else that comes to your mind? Universities, place are going to the universities. University council. See, at our times when we all have graduated, I'm supposing most of us are of the same era, uh, there was only one Delhi University, right? which was the aim and most of us are from Delhi University or from neighboring universities like Meerut University or you know uh, yeah. but then now the options are so much more uh, at that time going abroad was a dream but now if you look at it I think every 10th child is going abroad and aspires to go abroad but the same question which she said India is a growing economy when we have wonderful private universities in India and um, of international standards, why is it that there is still a push factor, you know, that you want to go abroad? Is it because of the tag or is it just because of, you know, peer pressure that they want to go abroad? So my next question to uh, Antul would be definitely about how can schools disseminate information to students in a pragmatic way and also a convenient way? See, some parents are aware, but some are not that aware. So, first of all, of course, empowering the teachers. Second, what, what do you think? See, one thing, one myth which I you know, very popularly have seen when I'm interacting with students, especially with 11th graders and 12th graders, in like, setup of merit, right? Ma'am, we have to go to Germany. We have to go to Germany. We have to go to Germany. Oh, my cousin is not here. Then we have to go to Spain. Okay. They are very fixated on that idea. My so and so cousin is doing that, or so and so friend is doing that. I want to follow the same path. But I often tell them the one size won't fit everyone, right? Same way, your skills and your you know accomplishments may not be you know in sync with the person who's already there. Secondly, many things they in Europe may with due respect to all the universities there, especially in the Scandinavian countries. Uh, maybe it's France or even Germany or. Uh, say Spain, dialect is a big problem. They have to do foreign language part. They have to clear those exams. So what happens? Student is doing the assignments of the course which they have to do, along with the language wala, you know, exams they have to prepare for. And even if they clear it, mehnat karke, so kuch ek naya territory, ek nai jage hai. When it comes to recruitment, people still of those countries give preference to ethnicity. They will prefer a French boy or a girl over somebody who's traveled maybe from that, you know, from other place. So ethnicity is a big issue which I have faced with many of the people who have gone on scholarship for these countries and they have returned empty handed without any recruitment. So edu as educators also, I think we all need to, you know, update ourselves that you have to countries where you have to English speaking, ke, you know, koi wo barrier na ho. language should not be a barrier for them. This is one thing, I, as a mother also, I have my own worries, you know. So as a mother also, I'm basically, I update students, ki this is not something I will recommend. You rather stay here, go to a top-notch, you know, uh, university here. And so lo lovely liberal arts university, like Shivnathar has come up so well. So I think we can update them on that. Now coming to the, how can we disseminate that knowledge to, uh, you know, different uh, people. I think uh, first thing, I would recommend is counseling without parents is useless. If you're not involving the parents, it will never be effective. Howsoever, you know, sessions, how so many sessions you conduct with students on a regular basis, at the end of the day, they will come back and say, ma'am, mere papa mummy allow me kar rahe. Okay? So it is, when you are treading on this path, I think it's very important that you involve parents from early on years maybe nine onwards. Give them regular information. Like in my school, we have a Google platform, Google Classroom. So I make sure whatever new blogs are coming, new university posts are coming, and uh, new courses are coming in, or whatever sessions I'm having in my class, I share on that platform. So it is in a way, it is becoming a database for the parents as well, because Google Classroom access they also have. So the moment they will click on that, 
they will have all the information which we have shared throughout the year. All the PPTs, all the blogs, all the links that I've sent. So it is very important to include parents in the career counseling process. Very important. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The second is, I forgot. The question is that how do you disseminate information to students and parents? Yeah. Secondly, uh, administration has to be involved. Then you have, you need to conduct university fairs in the campuses, so they get uh, insight of it's just not the academic performances they are looking at, but various angles of profiling also, extracurricular, co-curricular, volunteer works. They all matter right now. So I'll show you a slide, and it will be I think immense help because it helped me a lot. The whole sky printout is there in my uh, you know in my cell. So it it will help you immensely that we can give age group ko, kitna, kitna information de sakte hai, aur kis se usko hum aage so forward kar sakte hai. So universities are also one thing which I'd like to you know keep in my close circuit. Also, um, I would recommend I have people, my friends who are highly placed in various industries. One is a great designer, one is a you know faculty to NID, one is leading another MNC, one is a hotelier. So I have these people close to me. So time to time. We look for those links. I make a list. I make them sure, make sure that they are on my calendar of my school, and I have made whether it's an online thing or they are you know crossing merit. So we conduct those workshops in our school interaction where they can inspire a different league of students, and it really works wonders. When you see your real life example and you interact with them at that level, no, it is extremely inspiring. So people from various eminent fields, if we can call them in the campus. It is a great initiative, which I think is also very good. To actually, uh, to actually build on to two things, I think those were very fascinating. Is one to invite people because you know one of the things that worked in my school very well because I mean I teach eleven and twelve economics as well alongside being the coordinator. And what I realized was because our school foregrounds entrepreneurship in a big way, and that's a part of the vision. So we brought in a lot of young entrepreneurs, and when they come in and you know they talk about the idea of how they built their journey. What did they do? What was their thought process? That really inspires a lot of creativity in the students to go beyond. And you know, these these are people who, who are just starting out, and they're also excited to reach out to the community. They also want to. They also have stake as much as you know we have a stake in them. So I think that has really sort of inspired a lot of students in in school to think about okay, what did this person do? Where? What did they think about? And then that connects to what we do in our classrooms as well, very well. And the second piece that I want to add to what. Uh, you said was that you know um, one of the things is teachers also need to be on board with university conversations. I mean, they may not be the only thing you do, of course, because you have a whole curriculum to teach as well. But for instance, if a child has to do with economics, it's important that they have a good hold in mathematics. So you know, for someone to imagine economics without mathematics, that's important. In fact, in eleven and twelve as well. So having those basics in place, you know, if you want to do psychology, you should have a good hold on biology. You know, these these are basics that we should be aware of, and the college council is the best person to go to for that. And you know, universities, of course, when they come, they will talk about these things. So the teacher also has to become a center of some form of counseling that can happen. Of course, you know, at the end of the day, you add a writer and say, "This man, the best person. There's a person they go talk to her or him." But I know this. So you know, having that these little nuggets of information can really help in disseminating that sort of mystery of what college can be like. And you know, having. Your own graduates also come back and be a very very interesting thought. Where where you know for example you can invite you know students who are here right now actually now the university to your campus and say you know why don't we talk about what's what's university like because you can keep preaching it's the peers that teach them the best so you know the peer learning is the best form of learning that can happen for for them we are just you know parents who keep talking about the same thing every day right so we are we can be parents we can be teachers we can be the principal the Best form of learning is to learn it from someone who's been there. This person in second year, that person a better, you know, judge of the situation as compared to us. So let's get that in. So you know, having those connections is critical, and that kind of incites a lot of excitement also because that college life comes alive. You can have those universities coming with slides, and you know that is still there. But when a student says, "This is what happens in my university," that's my experience. Suddenly becomes more validated. My guess. One more thing, I just want to add before we go to the next question. Make a good alumni database. Absolutely. You need to have that software in alumni. your school. If you don't have, create that thing for yourself because that is a treasure which will be coming yeah. back to you in heaps and bounds. Leverage that. Yeah. 
they will, you know, I tell my, there's a document I wrote for my administration that alumni think you really need to invest in. To make them in the loop, keep them in the loop, get back to them, you know, on periodically, the right regular basis. And they are the people who will be a game changer for you. So that is also one thing I'd like to ask. So, I believe to what they've been talking about, uh, I think it's very valid. It, the peer-to-peer -peer learning also is very effective. The peer-to-peer -peer connections are very, very, um, you know, engaging because when you go back, you talk about the university that you're studying in, that's like the first time information the student is giving exactly. to uh, his or her schoolmates or his teachers. Because of course, like we're all preaching that we are an A-class university, we are this, we are that. But ultimately, it's the word of mouth from the students who are the main stakeholders, who are the ones who are, you know, studying here. They know the best and they also know the worst. So they will come around and be the great ambassadors for us. And the next question is, of course, how do universities partner with schools? And I think it's very valid to say that, you know, we have different kinds of programs. So there's something called outreach and there's something called in-reach. Outreach is when we go to schools, like they said, and we take our students or our faculty members, like the Anil just went to a school in Vadodara to be a TEDx speaker. I mean, imagine the engagement is just not giving a lecture on what School of National Sciences is, but he went as a TEDx speaker and he spoke on science. Nice. Day after we have a panel discussion where he's an online panelist with uh, with, with IC3 where it, he's talking about careers in science. So uh, that is the kind of engagement we as universities are doing. The first engagement for him was to address the students in a TEDx talk. The second engagement which is next week is uh, to counsellors, 200 counsellors from all over the world coming in understanding about careers in science. And the third engagement is happening right now, today, when he'll be talking to you taking you to the fabulous labs that we have on campus with state-of-the-art facilities. Imagine it is a dream for students to work in labs like those. I'm sure so many of you are biochemistry physics teachers and uh, there's nothing more than to be in a lab or to be in your workspace, you know, and get that feel of doing something for your students. So these are the various kinds of engagements that we are planning with teachers, with students, with parents. Uh, we also do formal and informal engagements. Formal is, you know, when you call us for career fairs, we come with our team, we talk about our courses. Informal is when we call you here on campus. And that's again, I think, a very valid one. While I totally agree with what Sumit said, it's good to get uh, entrepreneurs or, you know, high end speakers or faculties to come and talk. But imagine your own students, your uh, parents coming to our campuses and taking the that's tour. That's okay. And speaking as a parent from 2017, I got to know about from some another name of mine. And her husband had taken a tour of the campus. We were in SRM for the graduation, and from there we came to Chicago. The entire journey to the campus and all was quite impressive. But what really actually uh, I liked about it was the model of students here. It was not a teacher or a counselor who guided us, but it was entirely the students who us around, showed us the various uh, yes. classrooms and the hostel and the library. And uh, it was during the vacations, so they were working uh, yes. during the vacation on campus. So that was the idea I really liked, and that we talking about it. My colleagues and people who are looking for university for so we have something called on-campus jobs. Like you all have prefects and student council in schools. You empower them to be good leaders. But there's something beyond that here, which is called OCG. And two of them are right here, Utkash and Shivam. They are working and you meet many more who will, who have been guiding you from the gate to here. Mm -hmm. They are not volunteers. They are on-campus jobs. And we are very proud of the fact that we have something like this, in, which again is giving them a first-hand exposure of working. See, it's not a uh, it's not a corporate environment, but it's it's something where we're learning hands-on how to manage an event, Absolutely. PR management, guest management, food management, something as simple as golf cart management, getting people from the gate to here, sitting with them, talking with them, distributing the kits, all all the lanyards that you are wearing are made by the students. 
you know the the whole itinerary that was being planned was being made with the team last two three days. So there is a way in which we connect with the students, and it is so beautiful that they turn around to be such great, smart, talented students, and it not only helps them in their own profile building, but it also helps them to get good jobs. Because in your CV, you've already written, I work with the office of marketing, I work with the office of admissions, I work with the office of the vice chancellor, and then your uh, employers have something to ask you, talk to you about. So we take immense pride in offering these OCJs, uh, to, you know, OCJ ship to students. And the other thing that I also want to emphasize is that you know we organize these programs for high schoolers. There's something that you'll get uh, in a couple of minutes from now: the bags and the brochures. This program is done by the students, for the students, and of the students. I am extremely proud that mo my first winter school, which started in 2021, was done in an online mode, conducted by the students, mentored by the faculty. The faculty gives the content, but the students were the ones who delivered it. Yeah. She came for the TEDx event on campus. It was managed by students. Today we have Incube happening, today and tomorrow again managed by students. Uh, two weeks later we have the business conclave, again managed by students. They'll also come and talk to you and meet you. So the idea of you know, how we bridge the gap is that you get your students for events like these. Because first, it not only gives them the exposure to attend events with eminent speakers, but also meet our students, experience also see the university. campus, experience, experience at university. Experience university. Yes. I mean, I think there's nothing more than experience. Right? Yeah. So Absolutely. we've started this Young Thinkers Forum with the only aim that we want to call students to campus, have these in-reach events, so that they come, they stay with us, spend the night. This is the place where you want to be in the next four years. You know, how many times we take a house and rent and we go and we look around and we want to buy a property, we go and see the society. But do we actually get to stay there a night or two before actually investing that crores of money or the lakhs of rupees? But here we're giving you an opportunity to come, stay with our students. They are the ones, OCJs, who will take you around the campus. The faculties are going to be conducting the programs and then they're also certified programs. So the child, the will be benefited by not only getting that certificate and adding to their CV for foreign applications or Indian applications or just just you know profile building that's all. So I think formal and informal engagement, in reach and outreach, we take immense pride in sharing that we've opened doors to schools. Please come with your children. We can we also organize special programs. You know we have a counselors group. Antul is a part of it. Sometimes I hesitate in posting that because we have so many events on campus. But I don't want the children to miss out on it. People who are especially in Delhi NCR, I would love the children to come because I as a parent, like uh, Sabiha said, Antul said, we are parents as well. I have two boys who are 18 and who are 13. And uh, there's so much that I want them to learn and expose themselves to and get totally gadget free. You know, and that happens, the idea of my coming and staying on campus five years back was only this that the oxygen I want my children to breathe should be academics. You know, because this, uh, these informal engagements, going to attending events, listening to speakers, gaining inside, just broadens your horizons. I wish we had these opportunities when we were in school or college. But at those times, there weren't things like these, but now that they are, and these, most of these programs are completely free of cost for school children and teachers. So we want to give them the exposure. So according to Mr. Shivnada's vision, you know, uh, founder of our university and the first chancellor, he, he always said the only aim is to you know, impart as much education as we can. And in, 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 in the initial years of the university, you will not believe 90% of the children were on scholarship. But of course, now policies have changed. And, but we still give out scholarships. Um, and, uh, but yeah, so looking forward to having your school children also come to our campus for various engagements not only in biology, but in history, but in economics, in entrepreneurship. We have many, many programs which I'll be talking to you in a couple of um, hours from now. Um, my next question is, three things that the teachers and counselors should be mindful of while preparing students transitioning into college. What are your suggestions? To okay. Are you all high school teachers? So I'm sure these questions must be coming around. And you know, as a university employee, 
I think it would be so nice if the children are already prepared, you know, because the only thing children love about going to colleges, number one, freedom. It's not school, there is no time foundation, but things have changed. Private universities have completely strict 9 to 5 college hours, attendance is mandatory, 75% minimum attendance, medical leave, you have to produce a certificate, no fakes work here. So how do we try and help students, uh, not only this habitual or attitude, but also the mental framework. Suddenly they will become 18, there will be so much more to offer. And how do we prepare them? See, when uh, I make sure when uh, students are, you know, because it's the first batch of my school is heading out. But uh, first thing which I, uh, you know, when I'm interacting with them, I make sure that for a university, up the, firstly, up which part of the, you know, India or abroad you want to go to. Secondly, uh, the happiness quotient. Is it too competitive? You know, somebody who wants to go abroad, right? So there is one particular term which I hold very dear to me is the happiness quotient. Is it too competitive for you where you lose your identity? You want to go to a top-notch university and uh, you end up in the last slot? Or you go to a middle level university but where it's not so competitive but the working, you know, studying environment is very good. So that also is one thing which, you know, we need to discuss with our students. Thirdly, I think, uh, you know, transitioning to a higher education, I believe, have to see a lot many things that, is it financially viable for you? Which courses, sometimes some universities offer some courses which may be discontinued when you are having university reps. So that also you have to see, does it have a future? Interference of AI, kitna hai. You know, it is as a parent, you know, I feel insecure. So we need to make them aware. Is it like too much impacted after 10 years? Will you be having an issue with the AI, and, you know, interference? So that also we have to see about it. And um, what else can I do? Anything from you, Sumit? Yeah. Um, I would say two things. I'll assess your students not just in exams, but what they what they are called out for. Yeah. I think being conscious of the fact that not every student will be made for everything is very important. I think every student has a very unique journey. I think mapping that journey along with the counsellor is really important. So communicate with the counsellor what the, what's happening with the child. Having that empathy, as, you know, as, um, as, as our previous uh, speaker was saying, you know, having that empathy for the child and realising that not everything is made for everyone. Finding the right fit really is important. And the second piece I would say is look around, get information, be as knowledgeable as you can about what's going on. Of course, we, you know, if you're a teacher, you want to transition into a full-time counsellor, that's a different conversation. But even as a teacher, constantly work on yourself and see, do we know enough about what the universities want? Looking out for that information is really important. So I would say the right fit uh, and knowing and assessing the fact that students are not just made for everything. And the second piece is network around, see around, be conscious on forums, be conscious on, on what's happening around. That's really important. You know, current affairs are as important as they were forever. There's one more thing I want to add. There are some many times, you know, students are coming, ma'am, I am passionate, you know, I want to be a journalist, you know. These are real life cases which I offer. Yeah, yeah. So, so they are the real life cases which are there. Uh, where students are come, they will come to me and they'll tell me, Ki, I want to be a journalist, right? Okay, fine, you want to, ma'am, I'm so good at writing. So these are the things, reality check comes in, Ki, okay, you want to be a journalist. How good you are with the logistics also? Are you willing to work at odd hours? Are you, do you want to be like, you know, once you're a journalist, you're doing a job of an editor and proofreading also. So along with one thing comes few others also. So as a counsellor, it is your responsibility to make sure that these things are also addressed. Sometimes they are students are guided by the kind of money and the salary a particular profession offers you. As a counsellor, as an educator, this is your responsibility that they are guided by that amount, by the salary, but not driven by it. Okay? That should be a guiding factor. Okay, mind, this is good. Let me do my research. Maybe I'm apt for it. My skill set is good. My psychometric test is also reflecting that I may become a good doctor. But if you are not, be ready to accept the reality. You should not be driven by it because it's a lifelong process for you. These things also matter when you are, you know, transitioning from your school towards your college kind of skill set which you have and no denying about it. Sometimes they come with 
you know, I'm just winding up with this particular thing. They come up with these questions, ma'am, I don't know what I want to be. Fine, you don't know, but what are you good at? Are you good with communications? Are you creative? The skill set we need to find with those two. And there are a lot of free, you know, free uh, personality tests are available. Like Mayor Briggs is there, 16 personality test. It's a very famous yes. test and it's highly accurate. So when I tell my students to write a CV, okay, suppose I give them uh, one particular activity, you write a CV about it, okay, create a CV for yourself. So the dynamic wale bache, they will write my personality type, type, you know. They will write the personality type also in their CV. So a lot of personality tests are available. Make sure you use them, give them those, those links, let them try it out, let them find, you know, new things about themselves. So this is, I think, another thing which is very important. And I think, uh, you know, networking, yeah. networking with different counselors, attending uh, career counseling programs, you know, attending PDPs like these, so important. I mean, I'm a BA myself, I'm a teacher too. I was teaching before I joined the higher education space. But I'm sorry to say that I learned nothing from my BA program. It was a certified program by a, you know, a reputed university in India, but uh, those educational principles philosophy of uh, education and um, psycho educational psychology, nothing of that sort, nothing worked when I joined a school. When I joined a school, you know who were my first teachers? Those students. They were my first teachers because I understood from there that how do you manage a class? I mean, they sent me for a training program, which was, um, you know, uh, to a government school. And I didn't know, I mean, we only went and we got those, you know, 20 over 25 marks, you know, to submit some black files. So I think the BA programs, the count, they need to be upgraded. And see, I think it's really work on those skills. But in 25 years, I've seen nothing change. So I think that is how universities like us have woken up to reality to provide professional development programs like these, which are hands on, which not only tell you about you know, getting to expert panelists like these, talking to expert professors like these, these are our real learnings. Again, I think networking with schools, networking with peers, networking with your fellow teachers from different schools, talking to um, higher end educationists, inviting them on campus, upgrading yourself with the knowledge which is required. And you know, the kind of questions children ask are not easy. They have a mind of their own. Social media is their first teacher. Forget about parents, forget about you all, with due respect to all of us and our teaching community, but they learn much more. My grade eight kid comes and tells me things which probably I have never heard of also. And I'm proud sometimes that he's so good at social media, but then I also wonder that if this is the positive of social media, what if he comes around with neg negative information which is fake. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important to have that connect with this child and of course with our own children we may connect but smaller classrooms, smaller numbers in classrooms also help us well to connect with students. Um, and I think coming, I, I have to congratulate all of you and to your school for you know allowing you all to come spend a day with us. So this is just the beginning. I mean we have so much in store for you. I think the one day is very less but at the same time we would have loved to have you all over for a one night stay so that you also experience light life on campus. We have beautiful wildlife, we have uh, botanical gardens which we will take you around. So, but never mind, next time around we'll have you for a longer period of time. I will uh, now have to wrap up the... Uh, oh, two minutes. Yeah, yeah, I will have something to show you. And and for the then. campus, I must advocate for this particular university to be very frank. I had the you know, privilege of staying in for a week during my counseling, you know, a flagship program. And I met students from different backgrounds, different courses they were doing. Which pure sciences ke the, which management ke the, which you know, which humanities ke the, and just science ke the, I just went through the corridor and just going through that. You know, labs were there. Then the lab we come with a pillow and the machines. Okay, mm -hmm. so the labs are twenty four seven open for us. If you want to do the research at night, you want to carry it forward. It's all open for us. That is the kind of environment which in which you grow. You have mentors which really make you feel the place, and you know they're there to just go ahead and do it. I think that was a beautiful experience for me. Thank you. I just, you know, five minutes, maybe three minutes, I wrap up a few things which may help you to break the ice with your students. 
these are the questions just curated by when I was interacting with different, different platforms with different counselors. We came up with some, you know, few of uh, the activities which you can do it. And this is like segregated class wise. This is what's happening in the campus. It may just help you. CBS schools, this is how I did it. I should this. I'll just give you an example. Um, Suppose uh, I'm showing this particular thing, a picture speaks a thousand careers. It's a very small activity. Give them any, you know, any picture related to a particular career. Okay, maybe I'm just thinking about, you know, uh, something which has a lot of action in it. So now this activity can, uh, you know, help the counselors to understand careers and action through various real world scenarios using a static image. You can use a chef, you can use a marketplace, you can use a you know, uh, institution. Now ask them how many careers can you think of when I was exhibiting this particular industry? Can you think of some? This activity will be shared with the students later on. Can you name some? Engineering. Okay. Any else? My students name 38. Okay, without any prompts from me. 38 they named and I wrote it down. This is a, okay fine, that's a career that he is pursuing and he is a, you know, Formula 1 or Sorry? Sports. Accessories. Designers, right? Somebody who is designing it. What else? Civil engineering. Huh? Civil engineering. Civil The tracks have to be kept right, right? Quality assurance people who will maintain the quality of the tracks. Anything else you can think of? Sorry? Actually, helmets. Helmets, right. Insurance companies. Insurance companies. Yes. Marketing events? Then traveling tourism by a place where you're conducting this F1, you know. So people will be coming from different places to stay in the hotels. Hotel industry is also coming in. Anything else? Photography. So I did broadcasting, yeah. right? Communications. Email management. Email management. So this this list is endless. You can go on and on with every new picture. You can relate to so many careers. You can show them from any particular field. It's such a marketing, right? Give them a Coca-Cola can and tell them how many what one careers can you think of? That 38 careers were listed on the blackboard and said this is what is available for you and the list is there right so this is a small little activity I'm just showing you right now one or two more and I think that they are this is another way of storytelling which I somehow loved it maybe I should give any short no no it's okay please carry on so I curated a story that suppose it is, you know, the future of humanity, we have to go to Mars, right? We have to go and habit in, you know, habit in a particular place. We are shifting to Mars. So, long survival ke liye, humare paas, uh, this place is there. Industry is required for mass settlement. Okay, so you put nine and ten graders. This comes very handy. आप उनको ऐसे कुछ छोटा सा PDF के PPT बना लो, page में you know. And I'm doing sharing this with many. So if you want to exhibit in your classes or in your school, it's most welcome, right? So you give them these kind of things. Just don't tell them. तो ये मैं आपने लिए बनाया है मैंने. But आपको बताओ कि आपको अगर mass में settle होने तो वहाँ पे सबसे पहले industries कौन सी आएंगी? What kind of careers will be related to you know those industries? And stage wise, stage wise, how will you create? So, with storytelling, also you can you know do it with your students. So, there are different ones which I like the energy which is construction and culture and, and her field se kitne sare careers emerge ho hai. That is for you to you know find out. Then, what are the professional skills needed? What skills will make you survive in that particular? So, all the things you can bring it together on the same page. Um, so, let's make a little bit chart of the market, which is quite helpful. Is it visible to you? I don't know. Uh, 
लाइट स्टोन ज्यादा है Now, if you will just see this particular chart, this I made in our Excel sheet. ये division है हम लोग जो age wise, class wise और बच्चों को activity के लिए expose करते हैं. Maybe self awareness, activities related to exploring interest, aptitude. So I have divided it class wise. So you will have. I just put the cursor here. So six and seven and eight तक हम लोग ये वाली activities follow करेंगे. You know, we can have some extra valuable activities, basic life skills, right? So, us way we can just introduce these things at these timelines. Class ninth ka, you know, amount of information or jo humne content dekhna hai, to thoda different ho jata hai. Tenth and eleventh ka bhi different ho. So, this is all displayed on this particular Excel sheet, which comes very handy to me when I am including the value of activities in the timetable for my educators. So, where it is our responsibility? To share it with everybody. Nice. You have all the files with you, so this you can share, right? Okay. And this way, uh, I've not written my name on purpose so that you can share from your side also. There is no, there is no hitch. I think as so, as long as you know, students are getting benefited. And last thing I want to show you is which I made a lovely and I like because I made it. <laughs> this is just just I'll be clicking the you know pictures, student profiling. Um. Why it is required, right? हमारे इंडियन मार्केट बहुत इंडियन कल्चर आजकल बहुत कॉम्पिटेटिव है. So all this is displayed. Why? What activity is you can keep doing it? Oh, I'll just show you. See, when we do profiling, जो हम लोग बच्चों को एज पे इंट्रोड्यूस करा रहे हैं, एज और नाइन्थ पे भी बहुत कुछ प्रोफाइलिंग. In early years, because they are prepared for it. कॉमन ऐप एंड विकास का मैं बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन करा देती हूँ बच्चों को कि आप जब यूज की एप्लीकेशन टू एप्स एंड यू मस्ट डाउनलोड इस विकास एंड कॉमन ऐप राइट बिकॉज़ आई मे नॉट गेट नाउ चांस टू मीट विद ऑल ऑफ यू सो आप जब बच्चों को उसका इंटरफेस दिखाते हो ना सो देर लाइक 1080 विच यूनिवर्सिटीज ऑफ कॉमन ऐप वी जस्ट ओपन द इंटरफेस इट्स नॉट अ पेड़ा यू सी द प्रोफाइलिंग व्हिच शुड बी हेल्पफुल इन दिस यू नो लिबरल आर्ट यूनिवर्सिटी लेक्चर बना दो any other order is liberal art universities wo sab dikhate hain sare us colleges and not not us universities ko ki aapke wo kahan kahan par profiling kaisi honi chahiye extra curricular kya hai ki wo particular activities kya hote hain usko maine divide kiya lot of online learning platforms hain ye wali which are very free courses unke skills ke hisab se aap introduce karo go to these websites see what you like first to offer free courses and if you want to specialize then you can go for Paid ones, hardly three hundred, four hundred rupees per. But these are all certified free course, you know, online courses which are available. I wanted to share about Coursera. It's very useful. I just want to give you guys to explore this. Uh, when COVID happened in twenty twenty, we were all stuck for three months. You know, it was from March to June, March to May. Um, I read on LinkedIn. You know, we were on social media. I read on LinkedIn that somebody whom I know, an educator. He posted. I've done five courses from Coursera, so I just, you know, I went to LinkedIn and I, uh, uh, I got inspired by him and I said, okay, he can do five at least. Let me do one or two. And the best part is that the university gave us Coursera membership, you know, free for all you know, faculties and staff members. So in the daytime I used to be busy with my children, but in the evenings and nights, because there was no physical activity, we were all homebound. You can't get sleep. So I opened my laptop and I logged into Coursera and I did one course and I saw there were like thousands of interesting oh, courses. So I rolled to another one and I finished that one or two courses in one or two nights. And I said, "That too, wow, not bad." Okay, let me make my target to five. And I went to different different subjects. I took Buddhism, I took mental awareness, mental health, I took uh, English communication skills, I took so many other topics. And then I suddenly realized that within five days I had done five courses. I said, now many is time to post on LinkedIn, <laughs> and I post on LinkedIn. So see, your CV has become so broad now. Now I just done that. I feel so proud, and then I give a target. Okay, now five more. So I'll do ten <laughs> every night from twelve o'clock to two o'clock. I would sit in my laptop. My husband would come to the room and tell me in my study, and he would tell me, "What are you doing so late in the night?" I said, "I am studying for a change. After so many years, I am studying and not teaching my children." And I, you won't believe, I completed. 25 courses from Coursera in one month, and I and at this at, at one month of time I would do three courses because it would break the monotony. I did a course on photography, 
I learned how to use a DSLR camera which my husband had bought five years back and we never used it. I mean I did not know how to use it. I learned it there. And then I proudly posted on LinkedIn, I've done 25 courses and I went to that educator whom I got inspired from and I wrote to him, thank you for inspiring me unknowingly that I could do this. And the best part, when the university opened and the college, we all came back, I heard the same story from my students. And I was just so happy that some of them also saw my courses and they wrote to me, pinged me on LinkedIn, ma'am, how's this course? You've done it. Is it good enough for us to do on environment sustainability, on air pollution? There was just so much information. So I think LinkedIn and Coursera is definitely good. LinkedIn learning also comes free for a month. If all of you have not enrolled, please do. For one month, you can do as many courses as you want to. They not only add to your profile as teachers, but like I said, knowingly, unknowingly, you will inspire so many other beautiful souls and your children and your students. You know, within a week, my class is repeated, like my sessions are repeated after every week in the different classes. So there was a class, grade 7 student, now he's in the class, grade 8, now he's in class 9. So Karthik Pawar. So he is a pro in coding. So when this, this particular slide, when I was just sharing with our students, next week to next week, within a month, he covered 14 courses on coding. And he sits with this, he's a very quiet child, sits with a diary. And he just came up to ma'am and he got the air. 14 courses. So, when you say to your child, make a secret for yourself. It's an activity, right? So, what will happen? He can write it, that course, did this, loved it, so this is my other experience, which I gained it. So, this is another way. So, what I'm saying is that we have to do division space for us. First is your online learning. Second is what skills can you acquire? You can't acquire all of them, but yes, you can tell them to go to graphic designing or coding. Digital social marketing, these are soft skills which you can tell your students that you must follow it, but you must follow it. You must follow it. Then also academics. Academics, so this is extra curricular, so what you can do is, I have divided it in the polo class, in the quizzes, in the debate. So then we share, I am going to be sharing all this. So you can just tell them whether you can go for NTSC or you can. Different KGYP so kind of book, yes, spelling week, quizzes, okay, debates, okay, right, extempore, extempore, okay, don't go, okay, so you can divide it for them. Then sports. Up, so, you can see this bar as likes may say, but you can activity be very up. Take you involved, right, up, physically fit, right, up, all but you say, ever, but you say, oh, are you right? I can't fix what you have to do. In some of the staff, we can be in the top five, top ten schools. I think that portfolio learning is just that, absolutely. Then performing in applied arts, they can opt for dance and fine arts and photography, as you said, theatre, sculpture. All these things come very handy. Foreign languages, you can often, you know, inspire them. You can think, you can Spanish, you can French, you can all of speak all language. Duolingo is now certified to marriage to universities abroad now, so they can follow different levels of Duolingo. So this is another. This will be adding up to your portfolio. Summer schools and exchange programs, as many were saying, have excellent programs are here in different universities across India. You must look for them and update them, update your students. These are the scholarship programs and your uh, exchange programs in summer schools are available. They can do, then again, networking comes in. My daughter went, she's a class level now. Last year, I sent her to Pune for a summer exchange program in UWC uh, Pune. She made friends, she was there for 10 days. She came back and nine nationalities ke bachche, Argentina, Japan, Paris, alag alag dhaka, Nepal, bara sochu ke nao se bada bachche bhaat ke naan pe hundred ke, but aap nine ke ten nationalities ke bachche ko aapna friends bina ke lot rahe ho. Now they have calls, they interact, when they are traveling to India, when I was trying to say, you know, travel to Spain, so you have to networking bhi bati hai bachche. It inspires them to go beyond that. These are different internships, they are good internships, they are being researched also, that also you can follow. And this is the result, you develop empathy, self-discovery and thought alignment is there and you become enterprising and with the equipment leadership skills. So there are many things which I would love to share with there's some of them but the rest of the information I've shared with those students here, you can share with all of them. Sorry, and I think like you said, summer schools and winter schools are an amazing way to collaborate and send students to so that they meet people from diverse cultures, from different countries, from different states.
states. We had a summer school this year. We had students who were flying all alone from Mumbai, from Hyderabad, from Chennai, from Lucknow, Ludhiana. Some parents came with the children, specially to drop the child here. And then, the, the, within the seven days of staying here, the child told the father, called him back, Father, don't have to come and pick me. I will travel back alone because I see there are three, four who have come all alone. So let's leave the children. Let's let them be. Let them be independent. You know, it was so nice to see that they now want to come back again for our winter school. So at Chinnar University, we have the summer school, we have the winter school, we have the weekend programs for children where we want them to come and stay a night with us. You know, as beginners, grade eight, grade nine, can easily come. I don't understand uh, because of their board, how our ten to twelve has their own, you know, hiccups. But other than that, I think it should start at grade eight. If we want our children to be independent, to be socially alert, to, you know, to be empowered, I think it's so important that schools to promote programs like these where you send children, give the confidence to the parents that look, your child needs the exposure. They are not like us who are homestuck or homebound. They are so used to going to malls, they are so used to going for excursions. So let them now go and I think as 9th and 11th parents, the only excursion you should have with your children is Whichever city you're going to, take the child to a university there. You know, not only our university, but I think all universities in India are so open to parents coming for parent tours. So I think it'd be fabulous that you take your child, invest, instead of going to a mall and having McDonald's. On a Sunday, okay, let's go to Ashoka University, let's go to Shinara University, let's go to Jindal University, let's go to GD Golda University. Because unless the children move out of their school, and like, and also one of them, like she said, Parents are so important, you know, at 11th and 12th, students have their own mind, but they're definitely governed by the parents, right? Because the finances come from them. They're not so independent to make the right choice, while we want them to. And uh, like, you know, my own son, he's now a first year student. From grade 11th, we started shortlisting the universities that we wanted to go to. So we made a list. I told him, you tell me which course you want to do. You take in commerce with maths. Tell me which course you want to do. Tell me seven top universities you want to apply to. Check out the website, make tabs, eligibility criteria, and the process of admission. He did that. It should be there. Excel. And he put it there. Then he also took printouts and said number one, number two, number three. These are my top And then imagine for two years he only geared around preparing himself according to the university that he wanted to go. Whether he got through those three or not was not in his hands, but at least he aspired to. On his notice board, I mean on his you know, study board, for two years I could only see, you know, number one, of course, because we live here on campus, and we have seen Shivnada, it was his first priority. But the other two universities were so happy, and believe me, he gave the test, he passed all three, he made me give the fees in all three universities, because I didn't want him to feel that I'm forcing something on him. And at the end of the day, he was so happy, and you know, like his grandmothers were so happy that, he has done what he aspired to do and that happened only because he had a vision and his teachers cooperated. The school organized so many career fairs to different universities, competitions, talks, internship programs, just so much fun. So let's now break for lunch. Thank you so yeah. much Uncle, for this yeah. wonderful this uh, presentation. Yeah, this particular thing I'll be sharing with you, this is the curriculum which you can, you know, uh, this is a capstone project we did for IC3. This is a, my own project which I created for keeping you know, uh, school curriculum. How do you indulge, how do you involve further counselling in your school curriculum? Various steps. So this is again will be shared if you want to. Oh, sure, sure. Absolutely. Okay? And last thing as a, you know, council, I can just say World Economic Forum's ke, um, survey and data on the annual spend. So you must start following such platforms also which are available to the future of jobs. What is the trend? How they are changing? What is the actual data? When so every information is backed with data, that becomes relevant. When we talk in numbers now, it is stories always come in the same. So please start up on this journey and we'll And I it. think one more advice which personally comes from me and it has really worked. How do I know these two and how do I how am I in touch with them? How have they come on campus today is of course social media. You all have to be on LinkedIn. Yeah. Please raise your hand and tell me how many of you have LinkedIn accounts. Okay, so today your homework for those who don't have is to make a, make a profile. Yes, please make a profile 
add about the course that you will be doing today, you'll be getting a certificate, do a social media post because it will not only inspire your students who are watching your LinkedIn or your fellow uh, colleagues, but also others, you know, other teachers from other schools who would know that you have, you know, completed a course. So it was very active yesterday. I saw he had conducted a workshop on S in, in SERT. Yeah. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Now, yes. if I see high profile speakers like him, I would definitely want him to come and speak to my teachers or my, you know, cohort. Uh, so I think it's so important to network, to build connections, and you know, each one make one and then spread the word around. To be honest, uh, also partner with parents because when he was also parent for you, that did teach her at the start yes. some time. I first met him at Chinara School, Noida. He was an yeah. economics teacher there. Yes. And being a young uh, teacher four years back, he had such a good connect with the boys of the class, especially. I mean, that's what I heard from my son. That's what I'm saying, partner friend. I think he is the only uh, economics teacher who my son bonded so well with, you know. And I think that teacher student bonding is so important. Your love for your subject will only come with your love for teacher and your connect with him. So I think all of you should definitely, uh, you know, build like networking, your skills and your, you know, your contacts. And that LinkedIn is a really good platform. You know, I always say Facebook is for parents, Instagram is for students, and LinkedIn is for professionals like us who could share, cross share, tag, you know, etc. Et and so, put out the good work that you're doing. Put out all of the institutions and the colleges that you're doing. Really, really, you know, if they have impact on you, or then you have a future, or your students have a future. Start following their posts, the, the, their lecturers and the researchers, associated. So when you come there, you will start using the platform on LinkedIn as well. So that is my idea. So thank you for the session once again.